As the internet took off, legislation tried to keep up. And an important piece of internet content related legislation is something that's known as the DMCA. It's the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. It was passed in 1998, I guess, anticipating the digital millennium that we are living in. So the DMCA does a couple of things. Um, the DMCA is you know, established law in the United States. You may have heard about something called a DMCA takedown notice, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but there are two, probably two most important parts of the DMCA uh, when it comes to what happens online. Uh, the first one is uh, the anti-circumvention um, provisions. And these are fairly controversial and have remained fairly controversial. So what is anti-circumvention? So what this means is that if a copyright holder places some type of digital rights management software or hardware on a particular piece of content, it is now illegal for you to try to figure out how that works or defeat it. And it doesn't matter if you violate any of their copyrights in the process, just the attempt to try to circumvent these digital rights management approaches is itself illegal. And the, the problem with this is, you know, this sort of can be read as basically an, an anti, and I need to work on my writing today, this, this can sort of uh, unfortunately blend into an anti-tinkering um, and, and anti-curiosity provision. For example, for a long time, the rights of people to sort of examine things that they own. I bought this phone. You know, I should be able to take it apart, try to figure out how it works. Um, this is something that you know a lot of inventors, a lot of people that are, are creative have enjoyed doing and have learned a lot from. And the DMCA sort of specifically says, in certain cases, there are now this protected class of software or hardware that you are not allowed to meddle with. And even trying to circumvent these things is now illegal. Uh, and so this, this is sort of fairly unpopular. Now, you could also argue in the, in the preceding you know, almost two decades, these anti-circumvention uh, provisions have proved pretty toothless. I mean, almost every variety of digital rights management that, that content creators have tried to deploy has been defeated in some way or another. Um, and some of the exploits you know, require more and more sophisticated approaches, but you only have to do it once. All I have to do is beat one type of DRM and I get a, you know, an, un, um, an unprotected copy of your content and then I can distribute it a billion times to the internet. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you know, your grandfather can do, it just has to be something that somebody can do. So that's one provision of the DMCA. A, a more uh, positive uh, provision of the DMCA that's also fairly well known and has probably led to the most widespread use of this term in practice is safe harbor provisions for internet service providers and operators of various types of websites. So for example, YouTube. YouTube is this incredible platform. We are clearly using it. People all over the world use it to upload all sorts of interesting videos. But, you know, YouTube can also be used by someone who wants to upload someone, something that they don't have the rights to upload. So I can take a, you know, uh, copyrighted movie that I don't own the copyrights to, and I can upload it to YouTube. And then YouTube potentially, before the DMCA, could be sued by the copyright owner for engaging in the dissemination of this content, despite the fact that they have no control over what their users upload. Now, YouTube is constantly working and scanning and trying to identify copyrighted materials so that it doesn't you know, run afoul of these types of, of laws and types of rules. But the safe harbor provisions of the DMCA provided um, some degree of limitation of liability for both sites like YouTube and for internet service providers. So your internet service provider is not legally liable if you cho choose to download or stream illegal content over their networks. They can't be legally liable. So those are probably good things. Now, the Save Our Provisions have, have also, the, the same part of this law also put into place a mechanism for copyright holders to request certain sites take down content. And that's something that's referred to as the DMCA takedown notice. Um, and so you can, um, you know, maybe if you've posted things to YouTube before, you've received one of these, um, YouTube I'm sure gets, I don't know, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of these a day, a week. 
Um, and what it means is that the copyright holder has identified that there is uh, copyrighted content that's being uh, unlawfully distributed by a particular site. Um, and it, it forces or requests that the site take down that content immediately. So YouTube may respond to this by removing or blocking your video. Um, an internet service provider or website provider may respond to this by turning off your site. Um, and so this, this is a mechanism that allows the copyright holder to identify content that shouldn't be online, shouldn't be freely available, and request that it be removed. Now, the usage of this mechanism is somewhat controversial because uh, studies have found that large percentages of DMCA takedown notices are actually for content that is either not copyrighted at all or protected under various fair use fair use mechanisms. And so a lot of times these may be being generated by automatic you know, bots that don't really understand exactly what fair use is. And so obviously dealing with these types of takedown notices creates a lot of problems for sites and for creators and things like this. Uh, but in general, you know, you might argue that the safe harbor provisions seem like a positive move forward, um, making sure that certain conduits on the internet aren't held responsible for the behavior of users. Because boats are useful articles whose form cannot clearly be cleanly separated from their function. The vessel, tiny vull, tiny, sorry, vessel hull design protection act. I'm glad that's a part of the DMCA.